Hey, what's the heck going on? Hey, darling. And I am Master Yulisi Muff, known as the world's greatest puppy in prayer. With some of the world's greatest working puppies that you can find online today. So this is what you get to see how they react when they first see the stuff. Yes. Good girl. Hey. Come now. Yes. So that's how I get them to go up these steps. Good girl. See, she's comfortable with it now. Yes. So now. Over here to side. This footage was added to show some of you the first reaction and response that you would get with puppies when you first try to expose them to commands and obstacles. Normally you get to see a dog after I've been out there three or four times, but this is a normal response. Hey! Yeah! Yeah! This is one of my purple females. Her coloring reminds you of a, the old Dobermans that look black purple, but that is blue. So that's five generations of my blues. If you're looking for a blue female, this female is for sale. And I also have her litter mate sister. Hey, come on. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. If you want to have success, you got to stay consistent. And you know, you got to get out here and teach the dog the things you want to teach it. And you definitely got to, if you expect to have this kind of success, doing these kind of things that you see in a dog like that, you got to get a dog that comes from that kind of genetics. All dogs to me can are perceptive to learning at any age, but you definitely don't want to have the stressors yourself trying to figure out why I can't teach this dog to do this, you know? The, the, two, most, the mo two most important things to get these animals to do what we want them to do is one, have the right dog from the right genetics, you know? So you know you got to have the dog from the right genetics, not somebody that just breeding show dogs telling you whatever. And you definitely gotta have a dog like this uh, that has the drive from the right genetics to do it and have the methods from somebody who knows what they're doing when conditioning a dog because it's easy to screw a dog up and once you screw a dog up you know you're going to spend a lifetime trying to fix it so you, you don't want to go through those kind of things it's a joy to have a dog like this you know this is this is what you call uh, happiness happiness is when the dog performs exactly how you want him to. I cannot stress it enough that you must have a dog that come from generations of dogs that does this. You must find methods from people who live the lifestyle. This is socializing to me. You see, I got these, these people out here with kids. And here the dog right here, down on my side, in a, in a couche down, rest our spot. And I play ball around him and you get to see him. You know, this, is, this reinforces uh, to play the game around people in, in different strange settings and environments. He's been playing it here before, but now he's playing it in the daytime with people out here. And, and, uh, this, and he gets to see the people. You see right there? I'll take the ball and I'll throw the ball up there. So now he has to go up there to get the ball. The methods we use are common sense. There are things in your daily lifestyle. Good boy. If you use these common sense methods and the common sense approach, when it's time for formal training, your dog will surpass any. Praise and love is the most important thing you can give any animal when trying to condition positive behaviors and abolishing the undesired behaviors. 
we're going to take this puppy over to some steps that are much higher than the ones that he was just performing. And this is exactly what you do. You increase the steps. You increase the time. Never decrease praise and love. So, I just got him to go up the steps that are much higher. Yeah, Mom. Well, we'll do that again. Good boy. Yes, good boy. Come here, Jonah. Come on, let him. Come here. Yes. Yes. Come down. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Yes. Huh? And this is the last time because we're pushing it. Yes. Good boy. When you're out in the world training with your puppies try to make it a habit to end all of your training sessions with a game of ball something that you've already taught the puppy and the first thing I teach the puppies are to chase the ball and uh, run around with the ball and then eventually bring the ball back feel comfortable with bringing the ball to me and so then you use that foundational game for the agility as you've seen that I was doing in the park and uh, for obedience eventually as you see with the older dogs as well as to find and search for things so the ball is truly more of a foundational game for, than any other game you can teach a dog the ball so finding the ball then you can end up playing ball with the dog over and over when your session is over and that's what you want to do so it, it just strengthens your bond with the dog. It's a game that he already knows. It's the foundation of his life, and he gets to play that ball game after doing all those other things. So if you make the ball game most important of all your games, then to be worried about biting and obedience and other things, this is what you get right here. Uh, a dog that I call a nympho for the ball, nympho for the game, obsessive, high drive, to go any distance and continue no matter how fatigued it is or how tired it is. And, and th that's the joy and that's the goal for me with my dog training and all my methods is to get the dog hooked on the ball. That's what it's about. It's about having a dog that will never give up tirelessly, effortlessly. He is the king. You're looking for working puppies? Don't hesitate to pick up the phone and give us a call at 904-450-3339 and we are VanguardK9.com The money stick game is what I use to uh, imprint filing the money, you know? Click subscribe, become a Patreon, and give us a call at 904-450-3339. We are VanguardK9.com.